Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest on the heat wave that we are seeing at the moment but instead of focusing on those top temperatures we're going to have a look at the end of this heat wave which is going to be coming up over the next few days many of you that will, many of you will be disappointed but want this heat to carry on for longer but some of you would love a bit of a respite from this heat and we're likely to see that for many areas through Monday and for all areas into Tuesday but how will that breakdown happen and that's what we're going to be exploring in this video whenever we do get a big heat wave lots of hot humid air there is always the risk that we do see severe thunderstorms and a lot of torrential rain as we see a breakdown so what we'll do is we'll run through the latest ukv have a look at the precipitation and the temperature looking at the risk of storms towards early next week and of course the temperatures over the next couple of days and then we'll have a look at the ecmwf and the icon runs as well looking at their precipitation over the next couple of days to see what they are showing i've already had a flick through and they are showing a range of results but all do have the risk of some sort of storm activity now i've chosen these models because they are both high resolution and the most highly regard of course we would look at the arome run but it only runs out to 36 hours unfortunately so that may be something we look at through the weekend for the storm risk but not at this stage just to finish the video we'll have a look at the even longer range looking at the gfs gm ecmwf and the ensembles as as it is looking likely as we head towards the middle of the month there is the risk that we do go quite unsettled and quite stormy but it isn't guaranteed at this stage and we'll explore that in more detail as i said so do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. So you can see this afternoon, it's another very dry, hot and uh, beautiful day, really. Maybe the odd shower here or there. Like yesterday, we did actually see some quite severe thunderstorms across parts of Northern Ireland in very small areas, breaking out in the late afternoon to early evening. Now, there was forecasted to be some shower activity, but it wasn't quite as intense as what occurred. And as I said that over a number of videos of the last couple of days and last week in general, that because of the insane amount of heat and humidity around, if we did see that trigger, the storms really could explode, even if they're not really forecasted to. So that is something we do have to take into account over the next couple of days. But through the rest of today, it doesn't look like there'll be much activity at all. The worst conditions will be a bit of a haze, perhaps, in places. Through this evening, there could be some thunderstorms breaking out in the west, some heavier showers. Again, these could explode into larger areas, but here, just a small shower risk, especially for parts of the proper island, maybe the heaviest shower or thunderstorm risk across parts of western Scotland. You can see right on the top left of the screen, a bit more persistent rain, and that is the cold front that is eventually going to try and squeeze in, but it's going to be held out for another 48 hours from this point. Into Saturday, it's another really quite sunny, beautiful day, but look at that, across central parts of England, perhaps the risk of a few odd isolated thunderstorms breaking out. Again, this could be absolutely nothing, we could see nothing occur at all, or we could see some explosive storms break out in places. It's going to be really hit and miss, and we'll have to see with that tomorrow. But if we do progress towards Sunday, more towards the breakdown of this heat wave, you can see more extensive showers and thunderstorms in northern areas, more cloud in the north and west, as we are seeing cooler air start to move in. And finally, as we head through Sunday into Monday, more showers and storms in places, perhaps overnight, but it could really take off through parts of Monday morning. Some more heavy thunderstorms across northern England, maybe southern Scotland, with the main weather front through northern Scotland by Monday. And as we head forward to Monday afternoon, we could see more shower outbreaks with perhaps some more widespread thunderstorms here through Monday afternoon. And this is all as the, sun, as the heat wave starts to break down. Where this weather front is, where it's quite patchy, that is the dividing line between the hot air and the cool air. So parts of Prop Island, Northern Ireland and Scotland will back down towards average temperatures. But in the east, just ahead of these thunderstorms, still could maybe even get a 30 degree out of Monday before by Tuesday, as I said, all areas will be much cooler and you can see cloud and maybe a few thunderstorms through the early hours of Tuesday as much fresher air clears through. And you can see that by the much clearer skies, still showers around, but much clearer skies compared to the previous day as it's much fresher, drier air in from the northwest. 
Now you can see that on the upper air temperatures. Look at that much colder even the minus four ice firm getting close towards northwest Scotland. And you can see pushing that real big blast of heat away where it could still be really hot on Sunday, maybe just about in the east on Monday before all gone by Tuesday. The Cape is going to be pretty high as well. Look at that. The Cape levels are insane for uh, Sunday into Monday. The amount of energy around is pretty ridiculous. However, the thing with this is it's the trigger. We don't have the trigger. The triggers really only come into force into Monday, and we are seeing some big storms. So there is insane amounts of Cape as we head into next week. But at this stage, it's not producing something you'd expect by looking at this chart. It could explode or it could not. We will have to wait and see. And of course, we'll do more updates in the coming days as this probably is the next main risk coming up in the near future. Of course, still very hot the next couple of days. I don't think many people are looking forward to early next week, but we could see some big thunderstorms on Sunday and into Monday as it does clear. The Cape actually looks like it is highest on Saturday and Sunday. But from the looks of the precipitation, biggest storms perhaps on Monday, and that's because we've got more instability around. We've got more low pressure that's going to trigger and use the energy in the atmosphere. If you look at the max temperatures now, you can see through this afternoon, once again, seeing widely low 30s. Maybe not quite as hot as yesterday, where we saw 32.6 degrees, but still will likely nudge a 30 or 31. As we get see a brief area of cooler air. However, into Saturday, it could rise further, and we are likely to break the 32.6 degrees yesterday. And you see here for London, we're looking at 33 degrees and widely 30 to 32. So even hotter on Saturday from the UKV. And as we progress towards Sunday, it could be really hot in the east once again, widely 31 to 32. Now, I have seen some charts going around on social media of the Arpege run. Now, the Arpege has been a little bit... Yeah, a little bit weird with some of its precipitation, uh, with the temperature charts, as it was showing 35 or maybe even 36 degrees for Sunday. Now, I do think that is very unlikely, as we're not seeing any rumblings of that from other models, but we can't completely discount it, so perhaps I'll have the update out tomorrow, and we will see that from some runs. Um, but you see here from the UKV, YD31 or 32, and then finally into uh, into Monday, 26, 27, maybe could nudge a 30 in a couple isolated places. And then Tuesday, look at that, 19 or 20 degrees. If you just quickly show you that Arpege run, you'll be able to see that by uh, by Saturday, sorry, look at that, widely 31 to maybe as high as 33 or 34, so already a degree or two warmer than the UKV. And Sunday afternoon, 35 or 36. So almost three or four degrees above the UKV. So I do think it is unlikely, but this is producing an all-time September temperature record. We can't discount it, but will we see it? I, I don't think so, but we will have to wait and see. Now, do run over to uh, WX Charts and have a look at the East Indo F run now, looking at the risk of storms as we do progress uh, into early next week. You can see on Saturday there is the risk of a few isolated showers or thunderstorms breaking out. Again, maybe overnight once again into Sunday. And into Sunday afternoon, that's where we could see a more widespread risk of uh, isolated thunderstorms. Again, this is lower resolution than we were looking on the UKV. So these storms are not this bigger. They wouldn't consume the whole of northern England, northwest England like they're showing here. But these are the most likely areas. Into Sunday evening, into Monday, more widespread showers and thunderstorm activity. And again, there could be some more thunderstorm activity ahead of the weather front here, but it doesn't look too substantial for eventually the weather front moves through. We go into a much flatter westerly flow with lots of unsettled but fresher westerly air masses. If we do have a look at the icon run here, if we actually do zoom in to the British Isles, you can see as we do progress over the next couple of days, nothing too much going on into, uh, nothing really on Saturday afternoon from the icon. Interesting seeing that again, models having really tough time forecasting it because there is so little, uh, so little lift, uh, a lot of energy, but so little lift to create the storms. Into Sunday, could be some more showers and storm activity. Again, doesn't look too severe here. Not seeing darker reds, but still seeing some oranges and lighter reds, indicating heavy, maybe some thunderstorm activity before it all clears through Sunday evening. And then into Monday, could see more rain move in. But it does look like a bit more of a, a leisurely transition with less explosive activity there. 
If you do look at the convective overview, you'll be able to see the insane amount of cape in places. Look at that, high levels of cape breaking out within those thunderstorms. And again, we will have to see what we get from that. But tomorrow we could see quite a bit of activity. There is really uh, a lot of energy around, but not too much lift. As we do head into Sunday, that lift increases. And finally, Monday, that lift is very high with loads of low pressure trying to nudge in and weather fronts trying to push in, but the energy is reducing as the hot air gets moved away. So the next three days really has quite high potential of thunderstorms, but we have a very low certainty of it. Sunday, Monday definitely looks like the highest risk. This stage, though, tomorrow could be really active as well. Now, if you finish the video, but have a look at the long range. If we start on the GFS, you can see southerly flow continuing. Eventually, the westerly winds push in by early next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday time, and it does go unsettled. Not completely unsettled. There could be a brief area of high pressure that bridges back in for Wednesday, but then it goes stormy and pretty horrible. Look at that really quite deep area of low pressure. It is filling in a little bit towards the UK here as we head into the second half of September. But regardless, it'll still be pretty unsettled and pretty horrible. And all the way to 384 hours, that pattern condition continues. And with the jet stream coming in from the northwest, likely to be average to maybe even below average here with plenty of blue streaming in. Complete contrast to what we have at the moment with dark reds and pinks indicating 10 to 12 degrees above average. Now, if you look at what the GM compares to this, again, westerly flow trying to push in through the middle of the week, but high pressure just reaching in for Wednesday, but it's in with a cooler air mass. So yes, high pressure may be drier, may be sunnier, but won't be anything as hot as it is at the moment. Into Thursday and Friday, similar to the GFS, big low moving in, but interestingly, it doesn't dominate. It is close by, it is uh, just out to our west, it is pretty deep, but it doesn't dominate us, with high pressure trying to hold on further eastwards, and it's trying to waft up some warmer air, but you can see all the heat has retre retreated now to North Africa. Huge contrast at the moment, where it's been pushed all the way up towards Scandinavia. If you finish by looking at the ECMWF now, again, southerly winds continue to push in for the next couple of days. Low pressure moves in for Monday, Tuesday, but then we see a brief area of high pressure. Four more westerly flows move in towards day 10, but once again, could just about get held off. And you see warm air trying to waft up, but again, nothing substantial, slightly above average, maybe by two four or maybe as high as six degrees now finished by looking at the ensembles you can see very hot over the next couple of days before we see that big drop as we head between sunday to tuesday uh, but as i said still could be 30 degrees in a couple of places on monday during that transition in the far east but we got quite reasonable amounts of precipitation but you see it's not particularly agreeing with its time frame uh, we're not seeing any spikes really hitting at any one time again showing you the uncertainty and yeah, the lack of knowledge from the model is exactly when, where, and how intense any showers or storms will be. But the longer term outlook is looking pretty bang on now. Average temperatures, probably oscillating up and down, but evening out towards average temperatures, and quite a lot of precipitation, so fairly unsettled and pretty horrible. Two meter temperatures continue to rise over the coming days, widely looking at low 30s through the weekend, and as I said, could be even towards 33 or 34. And then there's an outside chance of 35 or 36, like the R pairs were showing, before we reduce back down to 19 or 20 degrees into next week. Dew points are still very high, up towards the mid teens, making it difficult for sleeping, and that continues all the way towards Tuesday time. So dew points in the London area not reducing until probably Tuesday afternoon, where they drop down towards the 7 or 8 degree mark again. Much more pleasant. And finally, if we look at the ensembles from the east and the F very similar picture again high precipitation as we see that the temperatures drop and then high precipitation in general in the longer term as the temperatures hover around average so we've got another two three days of this heat wave to go again depending on where you are if you're in the northwest of scotland you can see fresh conditions probably by sunday afternoon but if you're down in london or the far southeast might be tuesday afternoon before it does feel generally much fresher but there is quite a widespread risk of heavy showers and thunderstorm activity as we do progress over the next couple of days. As we saw by the three models we looked at the start of the video, we haven't got a lot of certainty, but the best thing you can do is keep an eye on the live radar. And of course, I'll keep you updated tomorrow and hopefully we'll have a little bit more information, a little bit more cohesion from the models for what could be happening on Sunday and Monday, as I do think that will be the highest risk. But we did see from those Cape charts, the energy, the Cape is still very high on Saturday. So there could even be some quite severe thunderstorms heading out tomorrow. 
and I might get that video in a little bit earlier tomorrow so we can have a look at that uh, and have that up updated into the early afternoon. I'll, I'll have to see for that, uh, but I'll keep you updated as we do progress into tomorrow. So anyway, thanks for watching. If you have enjoyed, make sure you subscribe if you're new and do stay safe in the heat and the thunderstorms if you do see them over the next few days.